Hi, it's Matt from Go Green Autos. So the purpose of this video is basically just a quick beginner's guide to owning and operating a Peugeot Partner electric van, or indeed a Citroen Berlingo electric van. They're identical vehicles. So firstly, starting it, obviously the keys, remote central locking, unlock at the bottom, lock at the top. The middle one locks and unlocks the uh, cargo area, the rear doors and the side door on the other side. But this is unlocked already. So starting the van is pretty similar to a, a normal diesel van to be honest. You put the keys in the ignition, you must put your foot on the brake and hold it on the brake. You turn the ignition on and you'll see the dash light up. This is where you don't want to be too quick. You don't turn it all the way around. Just put the ignition on and wait a second for the dash to light up and then turn the key again to like uh, a starter motor on a diesel van and you hear the beep and then you're looking for that green light and that says the van is on. Obviously there's no noise, there's no vibration because all you're doing is turning the electricity on and that is it, the van is on. And then to put it into gear, again, you've got to keep your foot on the uh, foot brake. So keeping your foot on the brake, this is your gears, park, reverse, neutral, drive. So you just select drive take the handbrake off then you can release the foot brake and you do get a bit of creep as we can see there the vehicle is moving forward and again when you put it into reverse you've got to keep your foot on the brake when you change gears the thing that's very easy to do in these vans is to stop the van and turn the ignition off while it's still in gear and you mustn't do that you will know to you will you will obviously do it a few times and you'll notice a big clunk from the electric motor. So when you want to stop, you must put your foot on the brake as you put it into park. And as it says, a uh, little symbol there, foot on the brake all the time, put it into park before you turn it off. The other thing you must do, particularly if, on an in if you're on an incline, is always apply the handbrake before putting it into park and before releasing the foot brake. So you're putting the weight of the vehicle on the brakes and the handbrake before you're putting it into park. Otherwise, the weight of the vehicle is, is, is being held on the transmission and the electric motor, and you don't want to do that. So the other things I'll quickly show you, pretty much the dash is self-explanatory. You've got, let's just put the side lights on so we've got a bit of light there. So this is your uh, power meter, your usage meter, uses of energy. So when you're driving, the needle move around here, and this is obviously maximum power around there. So you really want to drive with it in the green. The, the further the needle can be around to the naught, the least, the, the, the less electricity you're going to use. So if you stick your foot down, you'll notice it go all the way around there. But um, what, what you really want to do is when you get to your speed, just lift off the gas slightly, lift off the accelerator slightly and just let the needle drop round in the green and try to drive into the green. And then when you take your foot off the accelerator and you get that regen braking, i.e. the motor has turned into a dynamo and it's putting energy back into the battery, that's shown up on the blue area. So when it drops down here, it is charging the battery. And uh, the further it drops down here, the more energy you're putting back into the battery. So when you're driving, you take your foot off the brake sooner, sorry, you take your foot off the accelerator sooner when you're coming up to lights or a roundabout or a junction and you let it coast and you maximise this charging. As soon as you touch the brakes, you've wasted your energy into friction and heat on the brakes. And once you get used to driving an electric van, particularly on these Peugeot partner vans, because the regen braking is quite strong, so you can genuinely drive with only one pedal and you, you just won't touch the brakes. The only time you touch the brakes is to hold it when you've come to a stop or obviously in an emergency. So you can drive this for miles upon miles and literally you don't touch the brake. And that's where you're going to maximise range. You're going to let your brakes last forever. And uh, obviously all that regen braking, you're going to be putting power back into the battery. You do find with electric vehicles, particularly on the vans, because they've got that heavy regen and you don't use the brakes much, that the brake discs do corrode. And uh, when you do use them, they are quite noisy. And if it's sat still for a few days, particularly if it's rained and they've the brake discs are obviously corroded, you do hear the brakes because there's no diesel engine clattering. Um, and it's absolutely silent when you drive these at low speed. You do hear the brakes rub and you will hear the brake pads rub on the discs, but that's all completely normal. 
you can uh, get some speed up and put the brakes on to clean the discs a bit um, but obviously you know a bit of corrosion on the brake disc is completely normal and uh, does it no harm but it's just a warning that you do hear the brakes grinding a bit on an electric ram because as i've said you don't use them much and uh, there's no other background noise to drain it out um next thing to talk about this is your fuel tank your battery pack and as you can see there's a little symbol of a battery so this one is virtually full half a tank and naught so it works no different as a fuel tank you've got the estimated range this is very much an estimate it's based on the current temperature of the battery pack so um, obviously cold temperature does affect the battery pack so vans will do less in the winter it's a cold day today and it's only estimating 66 miles but it also is based on how you last drove um, so as an example if you if you drive very fast you're going sort of dual carriageway motorway speeds and uh, you've done that a fair bit then it's going to predict you're going to drive like that all the time so the range will be quite low this is showing 66 miles it is you have to remember this is only an estimate the vehicle can't predict how you're going to drive so um, you know this is 66 miles i know i can drive a lot more than that on a tank uh, even in this weather so um, you just have to take this with a bit of pinch of salt the, the the uh range meter will give you range anxiety when you're not used to it and you won't be used to driving your vehicle down to near naught or or down to very low you know quarter of a tank or something you know maybe daily but it doesn't matter with electric vehicles because you're driving home and you're driving home to a charger so the scenario I, I always mention is if you had a filling station or a petrol pump on your drive you wouldn't drive around with two weeks worth of fuel you would fill up every day with enough fuel for that day and that's what electric vehicles are like certainly these sort of low range small battery electric vehicles that um you know one of these if you're looking at sort of 70 to 90 miles depending on the weather and the these climate per uh charge um if that's suitable for your day then they're great and obviously when you're coming home at the end of the evening or driving back to your house i.e your filling station and you charge it up overnight and it's fully charged for the next morning so you don't have to worry about driving back and it getting low and after a few months you will get used to that and uh, th this will no longer give you range anxiety as you can see it's dropped a mile already and i'm just sat in here nattering um, and that's because we've got the ignition on uh, and we're not moving forward so uh, we're using a little bit of energy doing nothing so next thing to talk about this gauge this is showing you your heating use as you can see air conditioning symbol at the top so your heating control panel is down here the heating system is the only other thing that draws energy from the traction battery so all electric vehicles they have a 12 volt battery up front standard 12 volts so that's driving the lights the wipers the stereo uh, all your standard 12 volt stuff the traction battery that's under the floor is usually 360 to 400 volt depending on the vehicle and the only two things that draw power from that is obviously the electric motor driving the wheels and then your heating system so on the can oh, sorry on the partner when you apply some heat you're turning this knob around to the red area we can see we've applied some heat and then the eco needle here is going up a bit showing us that we're using energy from the traction battery and the range has dropped accordingly to compensate this is assuming we're going to keep the heating on at this level so if i turn the heating to maximum and we now got maximum heat the needle is going up and the range has dropped accordingly up on the screen here you also get the same so i'm going to use the button on the end of the stalk there and you can change the display on the screen and if i go up to the car we can see there it says so using the heating has used 10 miles worth of range if i just put that screen back on and then i turn the heating off we can see there it says plus naught miles because we're not using the heating so it's not reducing the range and the range meter has gone up accordingly and then when we move it round to this side this is cold and as you can see there the air conditioning has gone on and air conditioning uses a lot less energy than heat obviously with a normal 
combustion engine, heat is the byproduct of burning fuel and vehicles have an excess amount of heat that they struggle to get rid of. Hence why you need a cooling system and water to pump around the engine to keep it all cool. And normal petrol and diesel vehicles have no problem generating heat for the cabin. With electric vehicles, there's obviously no heat being generated by uh, the engine because it's just electric motor. So all the heat needed for the cab has to be produced by um, heating elements, which does use a lot of electricity. Um, so heating will use more. Air conditioning is more efficient. So we've got the air conditioning on. As you can see, the meter has hardly moved here and nor has the range dropped. Um, even though the air conditioning on. So air conditioning use does use much less. I'll put it down to maximum. And yeah, nothing has changed. Not using any noticeable electricity at all. Um, a quick way to turn it off is to press the off button. To adjust the airflow, you just keep repeatedly hitting that button and you've got all the different uh, ways of adjusting airflow. And um, this is your fan speed here and obviously this is your recycling um, the other thing i need to just quickly show you in the front your cup holders are over there in the door and the same on the driver's door you do have storage down here the other thing that often gets missed is you actually have a storage compartment in front of the dash don't put liquids in there though and then you've got the storage there above the roof as well and then down here under the middle seat you've got a storage compartment down here as well the other key thing to note on the electric vans is you don't have a spare wheel so down in here should be a puncher kit which will consist of a bottle of liquid bottle of tire sealant and a pump and then this is um your toolkit, which just only consists of one thing, which is your towing eye to screw into the frontal rear bumper. And that's what you should have. And uh, there's a storage area there. And then these seats also drop down. Which so are... the seats on these vans are particularly practical. There's a blue tag there you can pull and that will drop the outside seat down. And then that's flush with the uh, cargo area. You can also then drop the middle seat down by pulling on that tag. And then that's a sort of table for the driver. You can obviously pull that one up as well and use that storage down there if you don't have the tire sealant kit in there. And then this outside seat also lifts up by pulling this yellow handle down here. I can do that one-handed, yeah. And then that seat locks up there, so you've got extra storage there on the floor if you want to use it. And then to release this one down, you've got a little yellow tag there where you can release that seat down. In the cargo area at the back, if you've got the vans that have got the solid bulkhead at the bottom and the mesh at the top, you have this door here. You've got a little yellow tag there and you can drop that door open which allows you to use the um, through space into the cab this also does slide off I'm not going to do it now because it's one-handed but you can just pull this off the uh, off the bar here and get rid of this completely so it's completely flush through on that folded passenger seat there the other thing that is quite useful on these vans that some people do is block this up it's quite easy just to tie wrap some foam or even some carpet or something on here what that does then is isolate the rear cargo area from the cabin so when you're using your heating in the winter you're not then heating the whole cargo area you're just heating the front where your passenger and driver sits and therefore so you're saving energy because it's a much smaller volume you're trying to heat um, you could also do it in uh, clear plastic if you want to do anything that will just sort of stop the airflow. Um, it's quite a useful thing to do. Obviously, if you don't have a bulkhead and you just have the ladder rack behind the uh, driver, it's a bit more difficult to do. And you probably the thing I'll work. quickly talk about is charging. So on this side of the van is your Chadimo rapid charger connector. 
you don't have any latches inside the cab to open it you just do it from the outside as long as it's unlocked and uh, here is the chadamo connector so this is what you would uh, charge on the roadside typically the motorway network at the services also some ikeas and some sort of supermarket car parks do occasionally have the rapid charger so this is called a chadamo it's generally 50 kilowatt hours currently in the uk these charge at a maximum of 50 anyway um, and you generate an app on your phone to activate those sort of chargers so with this uh, charging at 50 kilowatt it would charge the van to 80 percent in about 20 minutes so on the front of the van is your ac charging port this is what you would typically use at home or if you're out in public you would use it on a fast charger whereas the one on the other side is for rapid charging that takes a dc current and charges the van in 20 minutes this is your ac current and it's effectively the slow charging so typically go overnight only because it does take many hours and you would use this if plugging in at home on the home charger or using the granny cable where you can charge on a normal three pin plug or if you're out in public and it is just a um, far, well it's called a fast charging port but effectively it's the slow charging port so most public chargers at AC are probably 7 kilowatts these vans only draw about 3.6 kilowatts but you can plug in to any AC charger because the van draws the charge the charger doesn't uh, push the electricity in the van draws it so it will only draw 3.6 kilowatt so the van will come with a charging cable AC charging cable so this end is called a type 2 all chargers are standard at type 2 sockets so this will go into your home charger or the public charging post so you would plug that end in first and effectively make the cable live the cable isn't live though the these pins that deliver the power they're not live until it talks on these low voltage sense pins and when it's happy and it's communicating with the vehicle ie it's plugged in properly you'll then hear relays click on the charger and it then starts sending the 240 volt the idea is it, you can uh, effectively drop this in a puddle when you're on your way to the vehicle and you're not going to electrocute yourself because there's no power delivered until it communicates with the vehicle but you simply just push that in and you'll hear that click into place the indicators will then flash and it will start charging so that is called a type 1 connector but it's a, a bit irrelevant what the connector is at this end because the cable always sorts out the, the connection and the cable that comes with the vehicle is always type 2 at the other end and all chargers are type 2. So to charge your electric vehicle at home you take your cable you plug the type 2 end into your charger and then you go to the van open up the socket you take your other end you simply snap it in it then communicates it flicks the charger on and the indicators then flash to show it starts charging and you walk away and you leave it so it will charge the van to 100 percent and then it charges the electricity off by itself because the vehicle controls your charger so there's no problem about leaving it plugged in you can't overcharge you can't waste money you can't waste electricity as soon as the vehicle is fully charged it turns the charger off and disconnects the electricity if you ever experienced problems with charging at home it's usually your earth connection so this is my earth connection it's simply an earth rod going into the ground and electric vehicles need a very good earth connection so particularly in the summer uh, if the ground is very dry that earth rod might not be making good connection with the ground so if you have problems with charging not starting or charging not continuing through the end first thing to do is just chuck a bucket of water around your earth rod because that increases the connection to the earth it, it reduces the resistance to earth and that will improve the charging reliability so um, in my case i found that i was having to do this too frequently because behind me i've got a really big tree and the roots are all around here and just absorbing all the moisture from the ground so i was having to chuck water around my earth rod almost every time i wanted to charge so i've now put in a second earth rod just a few meters away and i've used a double earth rod so two four foot rods joined together so i've now gone in eight foot into the ground and that has completely solved my charging issues uh, because as i said most charging issues are down to not having a good enough earth connection 
The other thing I'll just note about electric vehicles is they still have a standard 12 volt battery up front. Fortunately on the partner vans it is quite a huge battery, it's the same battery they have on the diesel models so they do last a long time but like any petrol or diesel vehicle the electric vehicles are completely reliant on that 12 volt battery again so whereas a normal uh, petrol or diesel vehicle that battery is turning the engine over every morning so you get to know when that battery is failing because it struggles to start the vehicle with an electric vehicle all that's doing is turning your dash on and flicking some relays so you can't tell when that battery is starting to die so if you have problems with an electric vehicle, normally it is because that battery is on its way out and you can get some bizarre problems. A, a, a poor battery can throw up motor failure errors, or all sorts of errors on a, an electric vehicle. Virtually all problems I see on electric vehicles are just down to the 12 volt battery. So these are quite cheap to replace. You tend to do them about every four years. Um, I'm not gonna go into how you do that on the partner because you have to remove this plastic casing. It's not particularly easy. Basically you remove all of this positive wire um, and then this compartment slides forward. But there's videos on YouTube how to remove it. This compartment is exactly the same as the diesel models. And then you can change that 12 volt battery. It's very simple to do, um, but there's, it's obviously you've just got to remove this plastic casing first. So if you have problems with an electric vehicle uh, in the future and you get strange errors up on the dash that might indicate there was a motor failure or something like that, just check that 12 volt battery first because it might save you sending it into a dealership where it's as simple as replacing the battery. Another thing to note is tyre pressures. Do keep a check of your tyre pressures. Do not let the tyres get too soft. Not only is that dangerous, but on an electric vehicle that will reduce the range because obviously a soft tyre increases the rolling resistance. And the tyre pressures are on a sticker here inside the driver's door. And on a partner van, the front tyres want to be at 2.6 bar and the rear at 3.3 bar.